Well, hello everyone. Well, it's time for some more Quadrajet videos. Uh, so sit, sit down, buckle up, and let's head out. <laughs> uh, I've been looking forward to doing some more videos on the Quadrajets. I just hadn't had the time lately to do it. I've been busy at work and trying to continue working on the house and things like that. So uh, let's get started. You see, I have in front of me a huge pile of Quadrajets. Uh, these are all different years and models and things like that so those are going to be my teaching aids and even have a couple over here so uh, what I want to do here is I'm going to do a few separate videos concerning different topics but um, the, this first video what I'm going to concern this video with is going to be how to tell the different models of quadrajets uh, we're not going to talk about CFM yet. I'm going to do that in another video. Right now we're just talking about what their names mean. Um, now all quarter jets are basically similar. Uh, there was a generational change in the 1970s, I think starting with the 76 model year, uh, which I'll describe to you in detail. Uh, but functionally, they're pretty similar. Uh, they look pretty similar, so let's take a look at this and see what we find out. Now, when you look at these quadrajets I have stacked up here, you'll notice that the majority of these have a front inlet fuel uh, filter housing. That means mounted on the car, it goes straight in. The filter housing is like you see there, it goes straight in. Then you'll see down here, there's one has a side inlet. Uh, there's no operational change, no functional differences in this. It's just basically due to the packaging of the engine compartment. Uh, Chevrolets always use a side inlet. Uh, they have a, sometimes have a thermostat housing that's right in front that would preclude using a straight out fuel line. Uh, Pontiac, Buick, Oldsmobile usually always used a straight inlet. Now there is a 454 application from the mid-1970s that uses a carburetor that almost is identical to this one back here so uh, you'll run across that sometimes even though it's about a 76 or 77 you may think golly that's got the wrong carburetor on it but it doesn't if you check you, you know it shouldn't you'll check the number and it will decode to a 1976 454 application and I am going to get into the decoding here in the next video so stay tuned for that so when you talk about quarter jets You'll see some a little bit of nomenclature thrown around. You'll see them called 4MV, 4MC, uh, M4MC, uh, M4ME, E4ME, things like that. So you may think, what the hell? You know, what does all that mean? It's just a quarter jet. Well, it, it's kind of confusing if you don't wrap your mind around it, but it's, it's not that hard to figure all that out. Uh, when the Quadjet first came out in 65, the 65 model year, uh, it looked very similar to this carburetor that you see here. This is, uh, I think this is a 70 model off of a Buick. And this is a 4MV. That, uh, at that time, there were only two different variations of the Quadjet. So either called a 4MV or it was called a 4MC. Now, what that last letter means after the M, the V, or the C, that means where is the choke at on this thing. So, try to remember this. A 4MV means it has a divorced choke. There's no choke actually on the carburetor, and that's exactly what this carburetor you're looking at is. Uh, this has, you'll see right there, it has a place for the rod, the linkage to go in. But there's no choke element mounted to the carburetor. The choke element's in the manifold. It runs off manifold heat. That's how the spring unwraps. So that's a 4MV. That's the very early ones. And a 4MC, as you might can guess already, is going to have a choke mounted to the carburetor. Like that. See that? See all the rest of them have that? Those are all... Uh, MCs. We'll just say four MCs now. 
Uh, this one here is missing one because I removed it for parts for another carburetor that I was using. So Now, in I think it was 76 or 75 or 76, I think it was starting with a 76 model a year. Uh, Rochester modified this carburetor a little bit. They changed some things around, uh, kind of due to emissions requirements, trying to make it run a little leaner. Uh, you know, just just some things that had to be done, but for smog reasons mainly, not for, for performance. They they really the consensus is that uh, the later models don't really run quite as good without some work done to them as the early ones, but. Uh, here's a quick guide to, to show you. Um, now, first thing you, you might want to remember is any carburetor that's the later model is going to be preceded by an M. I guess you could say that stands for modified. So instead of it being uh, 4MC, it's going they started being called M4MCs. Uh, at the same time, all the old style divorce choke carburetors were uh, they went away there weren't any more they either had a hot air choke like you see here like I told you in my other videos which would be called a M4MC or some of them which I don't have one in front of me had an electric choke element in them factory equipped and those are started called the M4ME you could say that's for electric choke so, just to go back over that real quick, 1976, the old style carburetor was redesigned. Uh, the divorce choke 4MV model went away. There was no more of them. So, the later ones you're either going to call uh, M4MC if it's got a hot air choke, or you call it an M4ME if it's got an electric choke element in it. Uh, now this carburetor over here, you see this one's got the electrical connections, the computer connections on it. That's a different beast altogether. Uh, they're not that much harder to work on, but I'm not going to get into that right now because that's you have to have special tools and things to adjust one of these. But if you're wondering what you call these, these are the ones that you started calling an E4ME or an E4MC. The E or C on the end doesn't do anything but tell you that it's electric or a hot air choke but the E at the beginning tells you that it is a computer controlled carburetor it's got that mixture control solenoid and it's got the T, uh, TPS right there now then let's say that you find a car you're looking at a car and it's got a quarter jet on it you open the hood of it and it's got a Q jet under there and you're thinking well you know I wonder if this is an old style quadra jet or if it's a newer style. Uh, it might be greasy and you don't want to scrape the numbers, scrape down on the numbers to see what year it actually is. But you're just curious. So here's a quick guide to tell you if you're looking at the early 4M or you're looking at the later 4M, uh, excuse me, M4M carburetor. You walk up to it. Here is an early one we've already looked at. Notice how squared off this carburetor is. It's very simple, very square, very simple. Uh, there's no vents out here, it's just got a vent that would vent into the air cleaner right there. This is the early style. This is the one that went away after 1975. Alright, so let's take a look at this one. Now see how much bulkier the front of this carburetor looks? See that? See the difference? You see it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, still has the bowl vent here. But right here, now there's supposed to be a fitting here. But right here, this is a carburetor vent bowl, bowl vent. And this would go to a charcoal canister somewhere, you know on the fender well of the car somewhere. So that's immediately a tip off that you're looking at a newer style carburetor. Now if you look at it's got these gizmos on it, this, the electrical connectors, you know for sure because this is an 80s model. These all, these, these dudes came out like after 1980. So, 
Uh, now there's some of these carburetors, there's many, many different applications for a quieter jet, so not all of them had the bowl vent. You see this one's blocked off, it doesn't have one. This actually came off of a truck application, so it didn't have to have one, so it's just blocked off uh, from the factory. But you can still see by the front design of this. See how it's got this little cap on it? That's a giveaway too. This one's got one, this one's got one, this one's got one. Uh, well, that doesn't have one because it's a, you know, it's a uh, electronic version. But that's a tip-off. Those were all M4Ms, 76 and later. So this one back here doesn't have one. Now the reason I laid out these carburetors over here is this is a qu another quick way if you have one of these in pieces to tell. These are the two different style carburetors. This is the early style. Notice that there's nothing here except a float chamber. You see in there? That's your accelerator pump bore. All it is is float chambers. You see it? You see it? Okay. Uh, and look at this one over here. This is the later style. This is the M4M. You see you got a lot more going on here. You still got the float chamber. But of course it's smaller now. That's one reason people don't quite like to use these for performance applications. Now this actually does hold some fuel but this little deal here this is uh, some of these carburetors have just a baffle in them and then some of them have like a piston. Some Cadillacs have another like a, it's like a, uh, some of them had this, it's called an aneroid compensator type of a deal. And uh, it's, it's simply f to keep the car running smoothly. It's like a, for like temperature changes and things like that. And then some trucks now, like up in the 80s you'll see a truck carburetor that looks like this, but it has a unit in here. Now let's talk about that because that's something you guys will run into if you have like these 1983, 84, 85, 6 Chevrolet Silverados with a 305 or 350 in them, you will run into that carburetor. And at first glance now, you run into that carburetor, it'll have a side inlet in it on that Silverado. And then you look up here, it'll have this connector, but it will not have this connector. You'll so you'll think, well that's I think that's an electronic carburetor, but what is it? Well, it's it kind of is and it kind of isn't. This is not the same thing on that kind of carburetor. On that hybrid Silverado GMC carburetor, this is a dual stage fuel pump solenoid for the carburetor, accelerator pump, excuse me. Uh, it don't do the same thing this does on this carburetor. It's a whole different whole different thing. You'll, sometimes they'll still be plugged in, sometimes they'll all be missing, but basically what that does on that truck, that Silverado, with that one connector, that thing richens the fuel accelerator pump stroke up under different conditions, and I'm not going to cover that too much, but that's, you will run into that on those trucks if it still has the original carburetor. And I'll tell you this, just uh, from experience, I've had a couple of those trucks, and I've never had one of those that ran very well. They all run rich. I don't know if it's because of that, the way the circuitry is in that carburetor, but they just, they all stink. They stink like fuel for some reason, like a burned fuel. So anyway, that's, that's your differences in the two kinds of carburetors. Now let's just look at this one again. This is the old style. Squared off front, like that. Then this is the later style. It's got the little chamber over here, which may or may not have another little uh, use. Uh, it's got the bigger front on it to cover all this. This has got the got the uh, bowl vent. And here's something to remember: the jets and secondary meeting rods in these two models of carburetors, the early and the late, they do not interchange, okay? Don't take the ones out of this one and try to use in this one. Now, uh, now that's probably only going to apply to the primary side of the carburetor. I think all quarter jet secondary rods uh, interchange. Now, if I'm wrong about that, I'll be sure to put a note on that, but I'm, I'm trying to dig some of this out of my memory. I don't... <laughs> I think I've forgotten more than I remember these days, but uh, so yeah, that's a 
that's the extent of it. That's an easy, quick way to tell what they are and what to call them if you want to be correct about it. Or you can still call it a quarter junk or quarter bog, whatever, you know. <laughs> but anyway, that be it. I hope this taught you guys something. And please ask any questions. And if I've said anything wrong, uh, please do correct me. I'm always open to getting the, I want to get everything correct and all that on my videos. So, all right, I'm going to make a, another video now coming up on how to uh, decode these things. So that's going to be a fascinating video. So please check back for that one. Have a good one.